Hi, my name is Brett Windsor, CEO of NIOPT. Short video here on upper cervical biomechanics. CO in purple, C1 in brown. When we bilaterally flex, we get a posterior glide of the convex CO on the concave C1. When we extend, we get an anterior glide of the convex CO on the concave C1. If we have the joints positioned in neutral and now introduce a force from the right to the left, a left translation will produce a right side flexion. That same right side flexion will produce a left rotation. And this is simply because what happens when we get a right side bending is it forces the right convex CO to go anteriorly and the left convex CO to move posteriorly on the concave C1. So with a left translation, we produce a right side flexion and a left rotation, largely because of the shape of the joints. If we reverse this and produce a right translation, so we move from left to right, then we have the opposite movement. We produce a left side bending, which produces a right rotation because of a left anterior movement of the convex CO on the concave C1 and a posterior movement of the right CO on the concave C1. If we now position the facets in flexion, so we put them into a relative posterior glide, then we've taken up even more of the posterior glide movement. If we then are able to introduce a left translation from right to left, we will maximize the posterior glide of the left CO on the concave C1. Because we've started in flexion, we can only increase the flexion there while the right side moves towards a relative neutral. So in order to maximally treat the left occiput into a posterior glide, we would position inflection with a left translation producing right side flexion and left rotation. We would do then exactly the opposite by putting the joints both in flexion and introducing a left to right translation, which will then produce a left side bend and a right rotation. This will maximally produce flexion or posterior glide of the right facet. So in order to treat the maximal posterior glide of the right occiput, we would then position the joint in flexion and add a left to right translation, which will produce a left side bend, a right rotation, and maximal gliding of the CO on the C1 facet posteriorly. If we wish then to maximize extension, then we would do exactly the opposite. We would position in anterior glide to maximize extension, and then a le right to left translation would then produce a right side bending and a left rotation. But because we're in extension, we're maximizing the position of the anterior condyle and returning relatively to neutral of the left condyle. So going from right to left introduces right side bending, left rotation in extension. So we can maximally increase the anterior glide of the right condyle to the extent that that's ever really necessary. If we wish to treat the left condyle to move it anteriorly on the C1 facet, then we would simply place the joints both in extension and introduce a left to right translation, a right translation which would produce a left side bending and a right rotation. But again, because the joints are positioned in extension to begin with, we'll maximize the anterior movement of the left anterior facet while bringing the right one simply closer to the neutral position. All right, I hope that helps to clear up some of the biomechanics with this and I hope you enjoy watching the video. Thank you.